Yo, what's up? We're now in front of the house at home and behind me here you have Tesla Model 3 but long range, yes, the 82 kilowatt hour panels on the battery. So, uh, I make this video, short video, to um, probably just to tell you guys that most likely I will not do 1000 kilometer challenge with this car. So, why not? Well, because, think about this, I have done so many tests with Model 3s in the past. And we already have pretty good data on 1000 km challenge. We can even simulate it. But if I get my hands on, let's say, Ionic 5, EV6, or uh, the EQS or something, something completely different that we haven't tested before, I will, of course, do it. But the thing is that we have already tested many Model 3s. And I also calculated beforehand that this Model 3, based on the range test and the charging test, will do it in about nine and a half hours given that we have v3 supercharger support all the way and we don't that's the problem so let me go inside the car and i'll show you what the problem is and why i figured out that we don't really need to do 1000 kilometer challenge with this one and i've got in by the end of the day i might oh this is nice and hot They're nice and cold in here huh let me manually it's a little bit too loud maybe i should do this and this something like that okay something like that yeah but Okay, this car for some reason is a little bit noisy uh, for for the HVAC system. I'm not sure why, but you see here, when I do the 1,000 km challenge normally through Sweden, I would drive here and down here and so on. You guys know the route, and we don't have VT supercharger there except for the new one in Vibe. This one, that's it. Other than that, we will only have V2s. You see here, 150 kilowatt max, 150 kilowatt max, 150 kilowatt max. Uh, except for if we use Ionity. But you see, the whole point with me doing these tests is that I want to try to do it as realistic as possible. And how many people travels around with a Tesla using only Ionity, right? So. Of course, you can say that, well, if you go further south in Europe or if you go to America, you will have V3's full coverage. Well, do you actually have it? Well, Rudin is not wrong. Wait, did they upgrade it? Ooh, nice. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just happened to touch. Yeah, you see, we still have many 150 kilowatts around Europe. Ooh, okay, but we still have. Yeah, but you see, it's like a mix of 150 and 250 kilowatts. Yeah. So the thing is that for me to test here i can't test it yet and but usually because of covid i'm not traveling there i'm traveling here what well, shit there's a problem with sun here yeah i have to do it like this maybe but we have one new supercharger here that is v3 foxy road uh, and then this one is also v3 but it's yeah so we have two v3s that i could maybe use and then we have the, the Ionity uh, over here that we could also kind of mix in, in the mix to kind of simulate maybe in the future we can have Ionity down with it. There is there, Ionity. So I could use that one, but also mix in one V2 maybe. But what will I find out? Well, I will find out that I might be able to do it in maybe not nine and a half hour, but maybe nine hour and 40 minutes. But that's still pretty close to the previous result we already have. So <laughs> that's why I figured out that is it really any point to do it with this car? Because I've tested the charging. It's slightly slower than the current Model 3. Um, yeah. And, but when it comes to efficiency, oh, wait, 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 I mean, slightly slower than the 2019 Model 3, like MC Hammer or something. Um, so it's charging a little bit slower than before, but it's more efficient with the Octoval, it's more efficient. So you have slightly more efficient car, slightly slower charging, which means that this car is basically as fast as the classic one. So is there really a point to test it then? Because <laughs> we could just test it with your classic car or we can test it and we will get nine hours and 50 or nine hours and 45 maybe. So uh yeah i don't know you guys i don't know you guys get me or not <laughs> uh so the only thing is that i could try to look at the map 
and I could try to figure out if it makes any sense to drive and try to charge only on V3, uh, try to set a new record for Model 3 or even Tesla, because the fastest Tesla until now was a Model S, 9 hours and 50 minutes. So this car, Model 3, has the potential to beat Model S for now until the Plaid, or I mean the, the newest long range is out. But then we don't know how, if we'll get CTS plug or not and all that. But so, so, but the thing is that I could do it, but it's going to take me roughly 10 hours plus one hour of preparation and one hour of post stuff after. So it would take me around 12 hours plus the editing the video, but the, the, sh the test itself would t take 12 hours. And we will more or less just find out that, okay, it's more about the same as the old one. And the reason why it might be a little bit faster is that we have suddenly one or two V3s available. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, one other test I want to do is to do um, acceleration test because that one has not been done before because uh, this car has the 82 kilowatt hour Panasonic battery and it's a long range, it's not a performance. I have tested this battery but it was in a performance and it was also in winter so it was actually the one that performed quite poorly after, I mean before Tesla fixed it with the software update. So we haven't tried a long range with this Panasonic battery before this 82 kilowatt hour. So that one needs to be tested. And also I feel like this car might be um, more silent than the other ones, the, class the classic Model 3s. And many other people have been also claiming the same thing. There was one guy, he said that he used to own a 2019 Model 3. He switched over to uh, the 2021 and he claims that it is more silent. And I also feel like, feel it and I just have to measure it. So you see, the acceleration noise test I will do, we will find out new information that we don't know. We need to confirm what we believe. Whereas the 1000 km challenge, we kind of know what it's going to be. <laughs> and the acceleration and noise test, I will do 90%, 80%, 70%, you know, I will do nine accelerations. That one will take around four hours only total, not 12 hours. So um, what I'm saying is that I might not want to do the 1000 km challenge for this car because we have tested it so much before. And also the same thing goes for the LFP battery uh, because we already done uh, Standard Range Plus before. The reason why I did Standard Range Plus was but we haven't done it. Well, we had done it one time with uh, the, the other one without heat pump. And then we did it with the heat pump and we figured out that we timed it so that we, it was actually pretty fast. It was faster than the old one. Uh, mainly because we nailed the charging stops better, uh, yeah, and maybe, I don't remember, but we, maybe, we, yeah, something like that. Uh, but beyond that point, we don't really need to test the new Standard Range Plus with LFP, because we will most likely get 10 hours, you know. So, and the same goes for the, the um, this, this car here. So, unless you guys find a really good reason why I should do, it's getting freaking hot in here, shit, sorry for that, I had to crank up the heat a little bit I mean, sorry crank up the H back but so that means that I don't see a reason why we should do 1000 km challenge here like, like I said if I get my hands on an, an Ionic 5 then I will of course do it because we haven't done that car before so I'm asking you guys is there a reason for me to do this or not if you don't if you watch this video in one or two weeks or two months and I still haven't done 1000 km challenge, it means that we didn't do it. <laughs> but if for some reason you guys have a really good reason for me to do it, you want to watch it or something, then maybe I'll consider doing it. And still, I haven't gone inside yet to check about the route planner and to check and calculate and see if maybe I'll do it anyway. But yeah, at least I want to get some input from you guys before I make the final, um, final decision tonight. Uh, about it so please comment about it and i will listen and i will figure out and get input from you guys and figure out yeah whether i should do it or not so sorry i'm just rambling a little bit because i've been awake 20 hours now i just did a test with this car to the arctic circle and uh, when i did the old test with the model 3 that was mc hammer i did it in 12 and a half hours and i realized that i was being sloppy i didn't really put my ass into it to make a good time but then for most of the other cars I did after that test, 
I did it properly to time it and to nail the charging stops and to get over to Moirana as fast as I could. So that's why I actually spent two days in this car going to the Arctic Circle, timing it to see how fast it would be because I believe that this car would be faster than uh, e-tron GT or Taycan, which did it in 12 hours, which was, you know, back then when they did it, e-tron GT was half an hour faster than the current Model 3. It turns out that this Model 3 in here, the long range with 400, uh, 614 kilometers of range and 82 kilowatt hour Panasonic battery was a lot faster than e-tron GT. Yeah, <laughs> it set a new record. It was just mind blowing how fast it was, but that will be covered in another episode. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.